Hello class, and now it's time to finish up with the Undead Berg area. I tried to record footage of, of this earlier, but I was saving to a USB drive, and the frame rate was completely unwatchable. So instead I'm just going to show you what I accumulated while I was recording footage. This Hollow Soldier Shield, which really isn't good at all compared to what we know we have right now. I also grinded up enough souls by repeatedly killing enemies to create this bottomless box, which lets us store items so that they won't clutter up our inventory. I stored most of these weapons, considering that we won't be using them. As well as this, some of the armor we got, which was dropped from the enemies, as well as most of the weapons. And well, So they won't be cluttering up inventory when we try to change armor sets or anything like that. You can also attune magic, as I've already explained. Basically, you just equip it to use, but you need a catalyst and all that stuff. I'll talk about that later. You can also, I also got this repair box, which lets you spend a minimal amount of souls and repair armor and weapons that have become damaged by it from use. Now I'm going to show you the grinding route I was using while I accumulated these said items. You may be wondering where this humanity I happen to have came from. When enemies are killed before you beat the boss, sometimes they drop a humanity along with the souls they normally give you. Uh, I have accumulated enough, but the max you can get is 10. And uh, the chance of getting it decreases the, f the more enemies you kill to get this. So, these, these guys are actually kind of hard to kill. What you can do, as you can see it's hard to get them behind shields, you can wait for them to attack you and rebound off your sh shield. Or what you can do is run up there and kick them, which lowers their shield automatically, and you can just hit them from there. So, now we are going to run back to the bonfire and uh, wait a bit. So in case you're wanting a good safe spot in this area, you can't be invaded by some enemies, like uh, by other players who are trying to kill you, and nor will the enemies aggro at you, so that's a good safe spot. Now I just remembered, I forgot a piece of loot earlier in the area, so I feel obligated to go and show you that. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's just run down this area. And you may have noticed the damage I'm doing is a little bit more than in previous episodes. This is because that through grinding I've got some souls and leveled up. I'll talk about that more later when I show you the stats I have now. So as you can see, plunging attacks do work on normal enemies. It doesn't increase the chances of them dropping loot or anything, but, but when you do enough damage over over the their set health, you get a, a number of souls. That, um, you get a greater, you get more souls than you would have. So over here is just another soul item. It's pretty simple, but and the rest of this area is all what we've all where we've been before. So yeah, these guys are pretty simple, but if you let them flurry on you, you're pretty much screwed. Fortunately for us, we have heavier armor, so we can resist most of these attacks. So just go ahead and run through this area. So we don't have to deal with, with these guys later, just go ahead and knock them down. Can't do anything about these guys. So yeah, just go ahead and kill these guys too. You don't have to go this way because we already did. But if if you want to, it's fine. It's worth a few more souls that you don't have to grind for. So we're gonna head back to the bonfire and I believe we're going to talk about what we are uh, leveling up with. You saw that item down there? I don't quite remember a way to get there. It's probably later in the area. So, you don't need to worry about that. And even if we do get it, it's probably just a soul item. <laughs> so yeah, just go ahead and run back up and to the bonfire. Now this, this game happens to have a pretty pretty elaborate online feat community as well, but for now we'll just show you the stats of level up and we'll talk about the online features later. So we're going to use this soul item to gain a few extra souls and rest of the bonfire. I put all the points into strength. This is this is so that we can eventually use the Zwei Hander. After we can use the Zwei Hander with 24, we will stop leveling up in strength and focus our efforts entirely 
on endurance and health. So, luckily for me, there's someone who actually wants to be summoned. It's a summon sign. Basically, you can use it and it teleports and it takes that player into your world to help you defeat the boss. Now, because of the nature of Games for Windows Live, the online thing Dark Souls runs on, it's not very effect it's not very efficient, so you might find yourself trying to summon a phantom and being repeatedly rejected. That white fog gate there, you can't pass through and it means someone is trying to invade your world. It doesn't always happen, but luckily for us it did. This guy has obviously gone to the very end of the game, and he is ready and willing to kill us very quickly to steal our humanity. So, it, it's generally considered proper to bow to signify that you are ready to fight. So he's trying to break our shield, and as you can see, he does way more damage to us than he d than uh, than we do to him. And his sword has the flame aspect, I think. So even if we do manage to block him. It'll still take some of our health off. Now, this guy is an honor duelist, I presume. They play by specific rules. For example, while I try to take care of this enemy, he's going to back off and let me do it. Now, generally, this isn't to the nature of Dark Wraiths, because it's their job to kill us and steal our humanity. I'm just going to go ahead and grab this, and then we will resume the fight. So, it's it's a really nice thing. It, it's a really interesting play style to PvP, but overall, um, in, in the Berg, I would not recommend it because you're just going to run into these guys who kill you in three hits. So that's one of the only times you died here, because I'll try to cut out anything where I die needlessly. So now that we are dead, we have lost all of our souls in humanity, but not to worry, because we can still get them back. See a little green thing down there? That's where our souls and humanity are. Basically, you just go down there and pick them up, and you will in immediately regain all your lost souls and humanity. However, and whenever enemy kills you, whenever an enemy kills you in human form, you will lose that humanity you spent to regain your human form. As you can see, we only have four humanities, and we already spent one to regain human form. Now that that form is lost, we have permanently lost that humanity. Then we have extra souls, we're just going to level up here. And we're not going to go back to human form because, well, it would just invite another Dark Wraith into our world and we would get screwed royally. Okay. So, we're now going to move on in this area, defeat the boss and a mini-boss known as the Black Knight that, that comes later. And I will show you any loot that I can. So, in through here, as you can see, be wary of fire. Those guys throw fire bombs at you. They do quite a bit of damage, and it is generally wise not to get hit by them. So, as you can see, there's a lot of items dropping because I have plenty of humanity. It's a battle axe. It is the starting weapon for bandits, the go to melee fighter class. It's actually pretty good, but it's nothing compared to the Great Scythe. It's more of a strength weapon, but the Great Scythe does more damage. And it has greater range and better moveset, so we're just going to go ahead and stick with it. So down here, there's a few more enemies. Do this little hallway, and there's one to the left. So kill him. You may have noticed how, how I was able to kill him in one hit. It's because I attacked him while he was in his attacking animation. That's called a counterattack. Gives you a little more damage. There are there are a few items that boost counterattacks, but not very many. That is, that's a black fire bomb. It's basically a fire bomb that does more damage. We are going to be using these against the mini boss Black Knight that I will fight uh, later. Well, actually, very soon, but later in this area. Now you might be wondering about that guy who's hanging back. He's got the fire bombs. I'm just going to shoot these guys with crossbows just to be fun, but as you can see, in my cooldown period for the crossbow, they managed to hit me quite easily, so that would not be smart to use in even slightly far range. So he's throwing firebombs at us. So go ahead and kill him. And then, here we have a chance to kill those three firebomb guys that were sh uh, throwing at us on the bridge. So just go ahead and uh, 
kill them. Now, their attacks have a bit of a uh, arc to them, so they went over our shield and hit us directly, in case you're wondering. So there, we got a few more souls. And we're going to head down and get a bit more fancy smancy buff items. So the residence key would work here, the master key would work as well, but uh, for the purposes of this, the residence key will be our go-to. This is gold pine resin. It adds lightning damage to any weapon you, you to the weapon in your primary hand that when you use the item. It adds lightning damage, but only if the weapon can, is buffable, like it's not a special weapon or anything, and it is not already and it is not uh, already buffed with lightning or fire or anything like that. So, yeah, more shield hollows. Now we've taken care of that archer dude up there, we don't have to worry about him anymore. Ah, and as you can see, the souls he gave us were a little bit blacker. They had a black thing in them. And that was the humanity. As you can see, we now have five. So, up there is the way to the next area. But my philosophy in games is to go the wrong way first. So we're going to go ahead and equip the, uh, the black fire bombs and reorganize our item list. So we're going to go ahead and put the orange sign soapstone there. If you want to know more about um, how messages work, I'm sure you can figure it out on your own. But <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's really not all that profitable. Almost nobody rates up messages anymore. The, the Dark Souls community is running pretty dry. So he's naturally resistant to fire. As you can see, we did 73 damage, but his health barely went down. These enemies are actually the standard enemies in the very last area of the game. So if you don't feel up to this, that's fine. You don't have to fight this guy. But it's, he is worth quite a few souls. And it is really rewarding when you do finally beat him. As you can see, we are now officially out of fire bombs. So we're switching back to our Estus Flask. The trick with this guy is to avoid his attacks by either sidestepping or blocking them, and then try to get a backstab on him. I'm still not quite all the way dead, so that, that what I was attempting there was called a chain backstab. As he gets up, you, you go to where his back would be and you backstab him again. It's pretty hard to pull off, but it's rewarding because you can get quite a few uh, backstabs out of it. As you can see, he has way more health than you attribute to him. So he is one of the much harder enemies in the game. If you get lucky like I wasn't here, you can get the Black Knight Sword. But he normally drops a titanium Chunk, which is a very powerful upgrade item that's used for the last few levels of upgrades. If you do manage to get the Black Knight Sword, consider yourself lucky because it is a very effective strength weapon. But it does require a stat investment in Dexterity. And it cannot be upgraded to, upgraded to lightning, so we're not going to worry about Black Knight weapons right now. So this is the treasure he was guarding here. It is the Blue Tearstone Ring. It's actually kind of a worthless ring, but we're equipping it because it's one of the only rings we have. It boosts your defense when your HP is low, which basically means the less hit points you have, the less damage you take. And it really only activates when you have a sliver of health left, so I don't really think it's worth it, and I usually trade it out for a better ring later in the game, but for now it's the only ring we have, so we're just going to stick with it. Up here, you just run back down as soon as you see that guy shoot that thing. You can roll down there, but there's no way that I know to get back up, so I would not recommend going down there. Now this is a very infamous enemy here. His name is Havel the Rock. He is basically a much harder, much tougher version of the Black Knight, except he doesn't have any sweeping attacks, and he does way, way, way more damage. So we're not even going to attempt to fight him yet. So we're just going to go ahead and fight the boss. You might not see this ladder at first, but once you get further out and to where the boss actually is, you will notice that these guys are shooting crossbows at you. So go ahead and kill them, so that we don't have to worry about them later. Ah, oh, that's the Titanite Shard. Good. So later later in the game, when we get to a more proper blacksmith, 
I will show you how to use that titaniite shard to upgrade the weapons we will be using. Now the titaniite shard only works from plus 1 to plus 5. You need to get different upgrade materials for plus, for plus 5 to plus 15, and plus 10 to from plus 10, or from plus 10 to plus uh, 15. Sorry, I'm in, yeah. So, basically the trick with this guy is to get on the ladder as fast as you can and plunging attack him as many times as you can. You can walk under his legs, but be wary. If he hits you, you'll be down for quite a bit because of that huge hammer of his. Now be careful, he can hit you on the ladder, and if all your stamina goes down on the ladder, you will fall off and be at his mercy again. So, if you're lucky, he'll jump back like that. It, it might be a little glitch in the programming, I don't know, but it gives you just enough time to get up the ladder without him being able to hit you. So we gotta do one more plunging attack, and he still has a little tiny bit of health left. Just go ahead and launch one regular attack, and he'll be dead. Now, if we were exceptionally lucky, we've got the Demon's Great Axe, which is a demon weapon that's actually really awesome. But um, it, it's, it has the highest strength scaling in the game. But since we're focusing on elemental weapons, it's not too much of a loss that we didn't get it this play, this uh, this time we fought the boss. So this was our first real boss in the game. And if you are not prepared, you're about to be faced with a real big disappointment. Because the next area contains a dragon that can kill you in one hit, pretty much. So be wary and don't go to the left here. <laughs> this door leads to the next area. You get the key in the Undead Parish, which is the area after the Undead Burg that we are in right now. We are now going to talk to Solaire, the NPC host of all co-op functions. He is my definite favorite NPC in the game. So, so a lot of these quotes are actually parodied, if you want to look them up. Go ahead. So, he's an undead like us, he's come to this land, also from the asylum I think maybe, so to, to the birthplace of the gods, to seek his very own son. So, he is a member of the Warriors of the Sunlight Covenant, commonly referred to as the Sun Bros. I will show you how to join this covenant in the next video. So th this is a t completely co-op focused covenant. And basically, you you offer yourself up to be summoned or summon another sun bro, and you will get a sunlight medal, which lets you rank up in this covenant. Joining this covenant gives you a lightning spell that you can throw lightning bolts with, but it requires a lot of faith to use, a lot of investment in the faith stat, so we're not going to bother with it. He just, we're not going to bother with this spell at least. So the white sign stope stone that he just gave us lets us put ourselves up, put ourselves up as summons and let other people summon us to help us beat a boss. So this gives us half the souls that we would have gotten if we had beaten the boss ourselves. And if you are, a, and if you are in the Warriors of Sunlight Covenant, it also gives you a Sunlight Medal. You also gain uh, humanity when you do this. So it, it's an easy way to grind up souls, because you also get half the souls for killing en any, en any normal enemies on the way to the boss. So it's, it's uh, shouldn't be considered very nice, it's, it's basically the opposite of PvPing. So he's going to stay behind and gaze at the sun and probably blind himself. So there's actually a lot of theories going around. This is Solaire is the firstborn of Gwyn. But, well, if you want to know more about that, look at some guy who's giving you lore videos, not me. I'm a walkthrough. So we're going to switch to a lighter set of armor so we can roll faster. And get out of the way when this guy attacks us. You might see nothing now, but you notice that the ground is scorched. So wait for it. And there's the dragon. He breathes fire, kills pretty much everything instantly. And now he settled himself on that perch right above the door to the Warriors of the Sunlight. So I'm just going to show you the quickest and easiest way to get past this guy. Basically, you just go into this little nook down here and make a, and go through the left door, which leads you. Wait for it. Once you kick this ladder, it makes a shortcut 
directly to that bonfire we just left. In case you're wondering how I did that, you just press B on a ladder and you can slide down it. It's quite nice. So now, we're just going to put our boss souls, per se, into there. Because we're so close to leveling up, we're going to go ahead and use these soul items here that we have. And uh, level up once more. And we are almost able to use this Wayhander. So, for now, that's uh, all we've got. Next video, I'll show you the Warriors of the Sunlight, some of the loot that the dragon's guarding on the bridge, as well as how to get the Drake Sword, and the Undead Parish as well. So I look forward to seeing you guys there. Hope you liked the video, and, well, class dismissed. Bye.